Break the stillness of this moment, for this is a time of mystery, a time when imagination is free and moves forward swiftly, silently. This is the haunting hour. Skyscraper Mystery. It is lunch hour on the crowded downtown street of a great American city. Come on, Sadie. Let's go into this store. I've simply got to get a dress today. Oh, gee, hey, well, I'd love to. I'm sure I'd love to. But I've been out of the office an hour now. My boss will be awful mad if I don't get back. Oh, come on, Sadie. It'll only take me a minute. I hear they got some wonderful buys. Maybe you can pick up something yourself? Well, I do need another dress. I shouldn't be having a thing to wear. I want... Hey, oh, don't... Oh, what is it? It's a man falling from that building. Oh, oh, oh. Regional Insurance Company Executive Office. One moment, please. I'll connect you. Regional Insurance Company Executive Office. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Sanford is making no appointments today. Yes, sir. I'll be glad to see you. Well, why do BS himself wants to talk to us, Maggie? Oh, and the faintest idea, Steve, but it must be important. Otherwise, we wouldn't be called up to the front office like this. Mm. Mr. Daly? Oh, yes. Miss West? Yes, that's right. Mr. Sanford will see you now. Come on, Maggie. And uh, keep your fingers crossed. Mm hmm. Sit down. Oh, yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanford. I've been informed that you two are the best special investigators on the company staff. Oh, well, I... Oh, I've got a special assignment I want you two to work on right away. Uh, yes, Mr. Sanford? I want you to look into these window cleaner accidents. They've cost our company a lot of money in claims already, and we may have to pay much more. Then you think they may not be accidental? I don't know, Miss West. That's what I want you and Mr. Daly here to find out. <laughs> I just got to report. No window cleaner has died by accidental fall in over ten years. Thank you, Maggie. Yeah. And yet three of the poor devils hit the pavement in the last two weeks. It could be coincidence. It could. Could be something else. Look, Maggie, add this up now. There are only two big contract window cleaning companies in town. Intercity and Superba. They're bitter competitors. Between them, they handle all the skyscraper business in town. And the business runs into millions of dollars. Well... Well, doesn't it strike you as peculiar that all the accidents have happened to the intercity company, the firm we insure, and none to Superba? Mm. Oh, I don't know. That could be coincidence, too. Yeah, that's just it. Case is full of coincidences, too, for. What are we going to do about it? I think we ought to drop down to the intercity company and have a little talk with a man in charge. <laughs> You understand, Mr. Daly, Miss West. I'm just a superintendent of Intercity Company. The firm is actually owned by hundreds of stockholders and operated by a board of directors. I see. Do you uh, mind if we ask you a few questions, Mr. Cooper? Not at all. I'll do anything, anything, if it will help stop these terrible accidents. Then you think they were accidents? I'm afraid they were, Miss West. I don't understand why they happened, but they couldn't have been anything else. Why do you say that, Mr. Cooper? Well, when the men fell from the windows... 
They were wearing their safety belts. And they were in perfect condition. Yes, that's right. That's what the police report said. Well, what about the bolts and the sides of the windows where the cleaners hook in their belts? They hadn't been tampered with. They were in perfect shape. Then you think your man plunged to their death just through carelessness? I, I don't like to admit it, Mr. Daly, but I can't see what else it could have been. But aren't you a man trained to be careful? Yes, they're trained to be very careful. They have to be. That's what I don't understand. These three men were old-timers for the Intercity Company. I knew them all well. I knew their wives and their families, too. I... Well, it hit me pretty hard personally, Mr. Daly. They were friends of mine. Oh, of course, I can understand that. Well, how have these accidents affected the company's business, Mr. Cooper? We're taking a beating, Miss West. We've lost two big contracts to suburbia already. We may lose a third. If that one goes over to our competitor, well, I... I don't see how we can stay in business. You see, the skyscraper people in town don't like all that unfavorable publicity. Yes, I read that the exchange building and midtown towers went over to Suburba. That's only one of our troubles, Mr. Daly. We're losing men to Suburba, too. We can't hire any more. What do you mean? The window cleaners think our company is jinxed. They're very superstitious. We're having all kinds of trouble hanging on to them. Of course, you insurance people are in on the picture now, too, Uh, Oh, not that I blame you, of well, We're just trying to get to the bottom of these tragedies. Of course. All of us would like to. I've been in this business 20 years, and I've never seen a mess like this. If this keeps up, we're going to have to sell out the Superba for a song. They've got our backs to the wall now. But... Oh, excuse me, please. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Bates. Yes. yes. I'll be right down. More bad news. What is it? The board of directors is holding a special meeting, and they want me to appear. It looks as though they're going to put me on the carpet. <laughs> I'll be lucky if I have a job when I come out. Good luck, Mr. Cooper. Thanks, Miss West. Oh, if there was only something I could tell them. If there was only something I could do to straighten out this mess. <laughs> Hey, taxi! Where are we going now, Steve? Back to the office? No, Maggie. Taxi! Where to, mister? The corner of 4th and River Street, driver. Okay. Corner of 4th and River? What's there, Steve? The Superba Company, Maggie. We'll see you now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You asked for a minute of my time. That's all I can spare. What is it? Uh, Mr. Carney, my name is Daly, and this is Miss West. If you're a salesman, you're supposed to see our purchasing agent. We're not salesmen, Mr. Carney. Well, well, what is it? Speak up. I'm a busy man. We represent the regional insurance company. Insurance? They're your agents. When will you fellas learn to stop pestering me? I'm not in the market for any more insurance. That's final. Now get out. Just a minute, Mr. Carney. You may own the Superba Company, but you can't talk to me like that. Just a minute, Steve. Just a minute. Mr. Carney, we're not insurance agents. We're investigators. Well, what do you want of me? It concerns the little matter of those intercity company window cleaners suddenly dropping from skyscraper. I see. Well, why come here to Superba? Our window cleaners aren't suffering any accidents. Why don't you go to see the intercity people? We've already been there. That still doesn't explain why you came to see me. We, um, we don't quite understand, Mr. Carney, why their men are having all the accidents and not yours. Look here, Daly, what are you implying? Why, nothing, Mr. Carney. We just thought that you might have an idea. I haven't any idea. I run my own business, a Superba company. What's going on at intercity doesn't concern me, and I'm not interested. Is that clear? It's uh, clear enough, but we've heard that you may be interested in the Intercity Company very shortly. What do you mean? Well, it's common knowledge that the Intercity people have lost several contracts to you. If they lose a few more, they may be forced to sell out to you. I'm not in the habit of discussing my business with anybody. I haven't any information to give you, and I wouldn't if I could. Now get out. I'm a busy man. Just a nice, sweet, lovable man, is Mr. Carney. Yes, isn't he? We certainly didn't get very far with him, Maggie. In fact, we haven't gotten very far anywhere. Steve, what are we going to say to the boss? I don't know. Looks like we're licked. We just haven't got a lead to go on. But we just can't go into the boss to Mr. Stanford and tell him the only reason we found for the accidents was carelessness. Why, first. Yes, I guess he would. But, Maggie, what other reason could there be? The man slip and fall, their equipment checks okay, the police put every one of them down as accidental death. Who are we to say no? 
still. Still what? Well, I just can't get over those statistics. No window cleaner falls in ten years. Then in two weeks, three of them drop. And all with the Intercity Company, too. Oh, it must be coincidence. Yes, maybe. Well, maybe you're right. Here's the regional insurance building, mister. Huh? Oh, okay, Dara. Here you are. Keep the change. Thanks. Well, Steve, I suppose you might as well report to the front office. Yes. Steve! What is it? Up there, that window in our old building. Oh, a man! Hey, look up! Maggie, oh, right yeah. through the awning and onto the sidewalk. Oh, horrible. Hey, it's another window to you. All right, Maggie, all right. Pull yourself together, Maggie. We've got work to do. Please, Come on, we're going up into our building and find the office that poor devil dropped from. So you know the office this window cleaner dropped from, Harrison? Uh, yes, Mr. Daly. I, I passed by it not five minutes ago and saw him doing the window. This is a 30-second story. Oh, the poor fellow never had a chance. I'll say you didn't. Oh, did you find out anything by talking to the elevator boys, Maggie? No. None of them delivered anybody on this floor or picked anybody up in the last five minutes. You see, Mr. Daly, there hasn't been any business done on this floor in the past month. The whole bookkeeping department used to be here, but they moved it down two floors. Oh, here's the office. Hey, Maggie. Yes? Now there's a faint odor in here, the odor of some chemical. Oh, yes. That's funny. It's kind of a... It's kind of a hospital smell. I'd say it was some kind of cleaning antiseptic, Miss West. You see, the scrub women were in here a half hour ago. Oh, oh, I see. Well, then it must have been the soap or cleaning solution they use. Anyway, it's not familiar to me. Oh, Steve, look. Why, there's the window washer's pail and sponge on the windowsill just as he left it. Yes, Hey, wait a minute. That's funny. What's funny? The pail's on the outside sill of the window. What of it? Well, look at the window, Maggie. It's already been washed on the outside. The man was working on the inside when he was... when he was interrupted. He must have been. Good heavens, Mr. Daly. Then how could he fall out? It's just what I'd like to know. The fact that it took place in an empty office is interesting, too. Just the place for a nice, quiet... Maggie. Yes, please? I want you to do a little research for me in a hurry. What? Check back on every accident of this kind that's happened. Find out which offices these poor devils fell from. Then call me the moment you're through. But, Steve, what? Well, it's just a hunch I've got, Maggie. But if it's true. Okay, Steve, I'm on my way. Hello? Steve, this is Maggie. I think I've got something. Yes? Yeah? Just what I thought. What, Steve? Murder, Maggie. Murder. Steve Daly and Maggie West, special investigators for the regional insurance company, have been set out to determine the cause of a series of mysterious accidents which have taken place among the skyscrapers of the city. In the short space of two weeks, four window cleaners have plunged to their death. Now the two investigators have discovered that the men did not plunge far down into the street by accident, but were murdered. From that point on, they hit a blind wall. Well, here we are again, Maggie. Look. We know these men were murdered. The window in our building and the fact that all the offices from which these window washers fell were empty proves that. Yes. Naturally, the killer would pick a time when the cleaners were working in empty offices. We knew he wouldn't be disturbed. Oh, gee, I wonder who he is, Steve. Well, if we knew that, we'd know everything. At least the motive seems to be a simple one, to ruin our client, the Intercity Company. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, to ruin us. We're paying out claims in four of these accidents now. The boss is raving. Yes, I know. He wants results. And quick. But good heavens, Steve, we can't watch every skyscraper in the city. Of course we can, Maggie. Be like looking for a needle in a haystack. Now, as I see it, we've got only one chance. What's that? Did you ever hear the old saying, if the mountain doesn't come to Muhammad, then Muhammad must go to the mountain? Mm-hmm. 
but I don't see where it applies here. What do you mean, Steve? I mean that I'm going to ask Cooper at the Intercity Company for a job, washing windows. What? Yes, if I can't find this skyscraper killer, maybe he'll look me up. Oh, now, Steve, for heaven's sake, you must be out of your mind. Maybe, but it might work. But you don't know the first thing about window cleaning. Well, I could learn. It doesn't look very complicated. Oh, now, listen, Steve, I won't let you do it. Sticking your neck out like that, why, it's, well, it's perfectly ridiculous. What well, isn't only the chance to be taking running into the murderer, it's the idea of working 30 and 40 stories above the street. <laughs> don't worry, Maggie. High places don't bother me. Why, I used to be a champion high diver when I was a kid. Daly, I can't give you a job with my outfit. This idea of yours, well, it's fantastic. Perhaps, Cooper, but it might work. And it's our only chance. But you've never had any experience. Oh, now, how long does it take a green man to break into this business? Well, a couple of weeks. But it isn't the work itself. It's the idea of being careful. Now, don't you worry about that, Cooper. I'll be careful, believe me. Taking a nosedive from a skyscraper into a hard street isn't exactly my idea of a nice way to leave this mortal coil. You'd be running a dangerous risk. Not just from the work alone, but if, as you say, there's a killer running around loose. Well, your own men are running the same risk every day. Yes, I know. All right, then. How about that job? Okay, Daly, I'll give you the job. But it's against my better judgment. I, well, I just want to say that you've got plenty of courage to stick your neck out like this. I admire you for it. Uh, thanks. Oh, uh, who's the man I report to? Oh, oh, Joe Lane, our crew boss. I was wanting to put you on and report to him here at 8 tomorrow. Fine. And, um, I wouldn't tell him who I am. As far as Lane is concerned, I'm just an unemployed looking for a job as a window cleaner. All right. There's only one thing I'm asking you to do, Daly. Yes? What's that? Be careful. Be very careful. Morning. Are you Joe Lane? Yep. Well, my name's Daly. Steve Daly. Oh, yeah. The boss told me about you. So you want to be a window cleaner, huh? Well, yes. I could use the job. Well, you don't look like a man that can do hard work. The window washing's hard work, Daly. Oh, uh, I'm not afraid of it. You know, I hear they're hiring laborers to work on that new subway. Maybe you'd like that kind of work better, huh? <laughs> no, I uh, like it out in the open air. Look, bud, I'm just trying to tip you off to something. Tip me off? To what? It ain't healthy to work for this outfit. We're in a city right now. We've had quite a few accidents. Well, I suppose accidents will happen. Okay, suit yourself. You want to work for us, we can use you. I'll break you in on the ground floor windows first, and then you work upward. You're as green as they come, but I haven't any choice. I'm just telling you one thing. Yes? What's that? Be careful. Hardly touched the food. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm too tired, I guess. Now, I've been using a lot of muscles that never belong to me. I... <laughs> By the way, young lady, you hardly touched your food either. I'm too scared. Scared? About what? About you? I haven't had a good night's sleep in the three weeks you've been working for Intercity. Oh, now, wait a minute, Maggie. And last night I had a terrible dream. I dreamed that, that you were a human fly. Uh, a what? A human fly. You were climbing up the wall of a new skyscraper a hundred stories high, and, and there was one little window at the top you had to clean before you quit. Well, it, it looked like a little evil eye shining down at you, mocking you. Well, there you were, climbing up the side of that blank wall, and, and you'd almost reached the little window when you started to slide back down. You slid further and further, and, and then suddenly you couldn't hang on anymore and fell into thin air. Oh, that's a great place to stop. What happened then? I don't know. I, well, I woke up while you were still falling down. Oh. Oh, Steve, why don't you quit? Nothing's happened to you. Let's keep it that way. No, nothing's happened to me, but uh, we've got one result anyway. What's that? There hasn't been an accident in three weeks. Oh, and you think the killer's lying low? Yes, but only for the time being. I'm quite sure he'll strike again. Mm -hmm. And you may be just the one he's looking for. Well, if he's interested, he'll find me on the 40th floor of the syndicate building tomorrow. (laughs) 
Well, that's the outside. Now for the inside of this window. Don't turn around, Daly. Keep facing that window. So, you're the man I've been looking for. <laughs> Not exactly. You're the man I've been looking for. No, keep your hands up or I'll drill you with this gun. I, I see you picked a nice empty office where you wouldn't be interrupted. Naturally, my friend. Naturally. What, what are you going to do now? Don't you know, Daly? You're going for a ride. A one-way ride. You'll never get away with this, Cooper. Oh, so you recognize my voice. You'll never get away with it. They'll get you sooner or later. Oh, no, my friend, I disagree. When you have uh, slipped and fallen to the street below, the police will call it an accident. They always do. You see, your body will be so crushed that they will... No one will think otherwise. After all, we're 40 stories up. That's pretty high. Why are you doing this, Cooper? Why are you undermining and ruining your own company? I see no harm in telling you daily. I'm quite sure it won't get any farther. You see, Intercity will have to sell out to Superba for a song. And then I'll get a dividend from Superba for my work. Yes, sir. Quite a dividend. So Connie of the Superba is paying you for these killings, huh? Killings? Oh, that's such a crude word, Mr. Daly. You mean, um, accidents. However, this is no time for talk. Work be done. I have a new cleaning fluid here in this little bottle. I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Chloroform, huh? You're very clever, Daly. You called your man inside the office on the pretext of demonstrating a new window cleaning fluid. Then you knocked him out with a chloroform and dumped the poor devils out of the window. And you knew that even if there were a coroner's inquest, nothing would come of it. Because chloroform is almost impossible to detect in an autopsy. You're too clever, Mr. Daly. Much too clever. Naturally, I knew you'd never fall for a pretext like that. That's why I brought this gun, just to be sure. I wouldn't turn around if I were you. You feel no pain. It's just like going to sleep. Oh, my eyes! My eyes! Try to blind me with that sponge, will you? You missed, Cooper! There goes your gun. Now, it's either you or me. I, I can't see you. But I can hear you, Daly. Once I get my hands on you... Cooper! Look out! The window! I strangle you to death, Daly! Cooper! I you to... Oh! Well, Steve, they caught Connie at the airport. He booked passage for the West trying to make a getaway. Well, that seems to tie it all up, Maggie. Especially where Cooper was concerned. When a person falls 40 stories to the street, whew, well, there wasn't any doubt. You know, there's one thing I don't understand, though. Cooper was walking up to you with a gun and a car soaked in chloroform, isn't that right? That's right. Well, then how did you manage to turn around and close with him before he could fire that gun? Well, you see, Maggie, I was facing the window when I saw his reflection in the glass. My hands were up and the sponge was in my right hand. It was soaked with soapy water and ammonia. Ammonia? Yes. Oh, when I saw Cooper coming at me from behind, I had to take a long chance. He was about three feet away from me when I flipped the sponge backward. Luckily, it caught him square in the face and blinded him temporarily. And the rest, you know. Mm-hmm. Hello? Uh, oh. Mm. Yes. We'll be right up. Who is that? The boss, B.S. Sanford. Probably wants us to start on another investigation. Well... If he does, I hope it's in a nice, deep subway this time. From shadows and stillness, mystery weaves a spell of strangest fascination, charging the mind with doubt and fears, for mystery is a strange companion, a living memory in the haunting hour.